Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're inside of a 2003 Honda Accord with the dash torn apart. Why? Well, the owner says she doesn't have illumination. Driving at night, can't see the HVAC, the radio buttons, basically anything that's on the dash does not light up. Okay, so first thing we want to do is look at a wiring diagram. Where do all the little bulbs in the dash get their power from? And they're on a dimmer circuit, obviously, so they should all be tied together. Here's a wiring diagram of the interior uh, dash illumination circuit. So there's a relay, it's called a taillight relay, under the hood in the fuse box. We have a red and black and the red. So those two wires go, go off the page, we'll see where they go. The red and black, or I'm sorry, the red comes back to the gauge control module and here is our dimmer transistor. And the dimmer here is this little knob on the instrument cluster. Okay, now I already started repairing this problem, but if you have your tail lights on, hit the dimmer. Let's see here. So the cluster is fine. This button didn't work, the moonroof. I already fixed that. A little hazard switch. That didn't work. Let's see if we can. See that gets brighter and dimmer now. Fix that. <laughs> the uh, shifter lighting, little bulb right here. So first I thought none of the lights are working. It must be a circuit problem. Not the case. Bad bulb in here. Bad little bulb in here. Bad bulb in here. They're all burned out. So we got three things fixed. What about the HVAC and radio system? Now this thing is an animal. <laughs> so here's, here's the layout. This is your actual like CD player and audio unit. And then this thing, contraption, is the display and the buttons and the HVAC controller. What the heck is this? And what's the interface? When you kind of screw them together, there is a, a connector right here. The splice is into the connector right here. This is the silliest thing I've ever seen. I don't know why Honda did this. It's, it's kind of stupid because A, you can't put in like an aftermarket radio. The whole thing is integrated. So if something goes bad, you're like replacing the whole freaking assembly here. This can't be cheap. And, you know, the radio is like not really a whole piece. It has to be integrated with this. So what do you do if you want to modify anything or replace one part? Like what if your HVAC controller goes bad? What do you do? You, can you like replace just the HVAC? I, <laughs> I don't think so. So let's go back to the diagram. None of the illumination on this panel works, by the way. And I can't find the radio code, so I don't want to disconnect the head unit just yet. Um, that still works. We put the key on. You know, the radio still works, so I don't want to disconnect that if I don't have to. Back to the diagram. Red, black, and red. So red, black is going to be our feed to everything. So let's see what we have on here. We have front ashtray light. That's it's actually not equipped with that. Navigation unit, EXL. This is not an EXL, it's just the EX. Cigarette lighter illumination, don't have that. Ambient light. Not exactly sure what that is. But then we have See, red, black, see, it goes here to this junction connector. And then that junction connector, we have TCS off switch, V6 only, don't have that. Moonroof switch, we had a burned out bulb in here. So each of these bulbs has a red, black, and a red coming to it. 
keep that in mind. Red black's the power feed, and the red goes to the instrument cluster to the dimmer circuit, which is a variable resistor. So if that resistor is zero, you get maximum brightness. You'll have 12 volts here, zero volts here. And if that resistor is you know, turned up, you'll have less than 12 volts voltage drop across the bulb, and your lights will be dim. Moving on, passenger seat heater switch, EXL, don't have that. Driver seat heater, heater switch, don't have that. AT gear position console light, AT only. I replaced the bulb in that one, it works. Glove box light also works. So if we have our tail lights on, got a little light in the glove box, okay. So the whole, you know, the main circuit works fine. Hazard warning switch, I replaced the bulb in that, that now works. What are we left with? Audio unit. And that's this whole monstrosity here, which does not work. Red, red and black, A19 and A9, those are the pins. So we have to go to the audio unit diagram to find out um, which connector that dimmer circuit's on. Because I think it comes to the back of this thing and then it comes out in these little tiny pins to interface with this unit. The wires are not on here. Surprise, I wonder why they wouldn't just put them here. It would be much easier to test. Um, the one thing I did already was popped off this little board. Look at this thing. And that's our HVAC controller board with the little buttons, you know, for your AC and your whatever zones. But we're interested in these little illumination bulbs. One, two, and three. Those do not light up. And what are the chances of them all burning out at once? Slim to none. I mean, that's what I thought going into this, but then we already found three burned out bulbs. So first I want to check, are the bulbs indeed okay? Or are they all burned out? And B, find the actual pins on here for the dimmer circuit and maybe put a test light in here and see if the test light lights up. I want to see if the circuit's good to here and if the problem is in this thing or are we missing a feed, you know, the dimmer input from the back of the audio unit. So it's kind of an involved diagnosis just for some illumination, but that's what you got to do on these Hondas apparently. Um, so first check, voltmeter, let's ohm out some bulbs. <laughs> so my trusty meter is being goofy. Verify your equipment. If you touch the leads together, it should go to zero. It does, consistently. Okay, the little turning knob was contacts are bad or something. Now we're measuring across one bulb. 4.2 ohms. Okay, I like that. So these bulbs on this circuit are okay. Now, question is, can we ohm out from here? So one of these is red, other one's red black. Eventually, going through the strip, going through this stupid thing into the audio unit. If we ohm out from one of these bulbs with this thing connected to these pins, we should at least be able to see which one of these pins would be responsible for our illumination and do our checks here with the lights on and see if the power is getting to here. Alright, this is really cool. The power of the ohm meter and a lot of people hate on the ohm meter, but it has its place, especially when tracing circuits on an unfamiliar board. So there are actually two connectors that splice this head unit piece into the audio unit. There's a big one here. There's also a small one over here. So what I started out doing was put one lead of the ohm meter on one side of the bulb and then just went through every single pin on all these connectors. Only one of the pins had some sort of continuity. Now we're expecting two pins to have continuity because one side will be, you know, the power for the bulb and the other one goes to the dimmer, the control. But if we only have continuity to one of the pins, there's a circuit problem. Let's demonstrate that, figure out which pin is which, 
and see if the problem is right here. Now this might be a little tough to show, but we will do our best. Now the key is to see the readout of the ohm meter. You guys can see it down here. There we go. All right, two leads. One of them on a bulb. Doesn't matter which side. Now let's go through the pins. So one, two, three, four, five. Still nothing. There we go. Pin six. 0 0.2 ohms. So this side of the bulb is connected to pin 6 on this connector. Keep going. 7, 8, 2.5. Interesting. So pin 6, 0 0.2 ohms. Pin 8, 2.5 ohms. Those are the two wires going to each side of the bulb. If you measure from the other side of the bulb, the pins will reverse. This one should say 0 0.2. There you go. Oh, make sure you have good contact. There's it. There it is, 0 0.1. And then two pins over, pin 6, 2.5. Beautiful. So now we know exactly which pins are the dimmer circuit for this entire thing. We could even power them up, power and ground, and see if all these little bulbs light up. Then we go over here and either put a test light on there very carefully because these are very fine, fine pins on there, and see if we're getting power to our, uh, you know, out of this head unit. Let's, let's do those checks. All right, here's the game plan. I got my baby test light. Find probes. So we can't put a adapter on here. Even AES Wave doesn't make ones that would fit these tiny pins. I'm going to have to go in there with needles and touch 6 and 8 with the illumination on. We're going to see if that light bulb comes on. So, dimmer's on. Let's... uh. So our hazard works, a little hazard light, you can't see it. I'm just going to try to touch pin 6 and 8 and see if the voltage is making it all the way here. So 1, counting from the right now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 and 8. Light bulb is not lighting. That's a shame. I was hoping it would at least make it to here. Hmm. Dimmer's on full blast. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now let's try down here. One, two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nothing on there. Finally, I think we can get to the soldering connections down there. Well, let's do the do the bypass test and put power directly to the board over here. Let's do it from a cigarette lighter and see if at least these bulbs light up. All right, next test. I have the Power Probe Cigarette Lighter Adapter. Very neat little uh, piece of equipment. It just has two banana jacks, plus and minus, they're labeled. Then I have the various leads attached to those. And on this end, and this end, you can see my baby test light is lit. So our cigarette lighter is functional. Now, what I want to do, <clears throat> is, my camera is stable, put needles on positive and negative and touch pins six oh. and now with two needles 
I'm going to apply power and ground to pins 6 and 8 on this board, which we determined go to the illumination bulbs. Here we go. Let's see if these bulbs light up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Boom. Absolutely. So that lights up. And we can check that the radio is backlit as well, and I'm sure it will be. These are all in one circuit. That's pretty sweet. So nothing wrong here. We're missing our dimmer input to this board from the audio unit, which kind of sucks because you know we gotta find where that break is. It's just a pass-through really to this board. Um, I want to just double check that when we apply power and ground, this radio lights up. So let me set you guys over here so you can see. This is not the easiest thing to film. <laughs> Let's see if, uh, if I gingerly apply power and ground to pins 6 and 8. That's pin 6. I'm going to hold this in place. Oh, cripes. I don't want to break anything. Steady. This is a pain in the butt. Right, here we go. There's pin 6. There's pin 8. Yes, the radio is indeed lit up. Let me turn my light off. I can't see this. Oh man. Toughest radio shot of the year. Yep, the, vo the volume knob is definitely lit up. CD's lit up. How about the AM FM buttons? It's hard to tell. Ah, uh, we we'll have to turn the lights off in the garage. All right, here we go again. Find pins. Let's see, find one pin. The other one's just two over. Pin six. And pin eight. There we go. Uh oh. Why are those buttons not lit? Maybe it only light up when you turn the radio on. We can't turn the radio on without plugging the stupid thing in. Oh man, this is a pain in the butt. So those work down there. All the other ones probably don't turn on until you push the power button for the radio. Perhaps. I'm not sure. Ridiculous. At least something works. So, we gotta figure out why power for the dimmer circuit is not reaching the head unit right here. Next check, we got the radio pulled out, still plugged in. I got my baby test light connected to the red and the red black on the back of the audio unit. Those are the inputs from the main circuit. Lights on. Our bulb indeed lights up and it's dimmable. So everything's good to here. That board is good, but from here to here, <laughs> we got a problem. Does that mean I have to tear apart this whole radio to find a bad trace? That would be a pain in the butt. Well, unfortunately, on this illumination circuit on the audio and HVAC board, we're going to have to call it quits. You know why? Because it's not as simple as it looks. So the audio unit is not simply a pass-through for the red, black, and red wires. So in the schematic, 
red black is the power feed from that relay and then the red is the variable resistor to the dimmer switch however by the time the uh, voltage you know there's something on the board and it feeds these pins right here they're actually labeled they're called ILL 8 volt D I don't know if it'll focus on that then ILL GND ground then we have more pins over here let's see if they'll focus in ILL 8 volt C ILL ground, ILL ground, ILL 8 volt B there we go B, C, ground so there are actually four A, B, C and D illumination feeds to you know part of it goes to the uh, HVAC that was this guy that we found then some of the other ones go to the radio buttons the ones that didn't light up when we did the manual test on there. But in any case, you see the difference? These ILL ground, those are just grounds. They're grounded from here to here. And the 8 volt, so there's something on the board that converts this constant power and variable ground to a variable power and a constant ground unfortunately you can't just solder wires and bypass the board because <coughs> there's no way to do it is these pins if you solder something to here you'll either solder it directly to ground which will make all the lights really bright and you can't use your dimmer um, and you don't want to solder the actual power feed to the 8 volt feed um, because A, it'll make everything on the HVAC unit bright and you can't control it because it's always constantly grounded, the ground works. And we don't know what is on this board that can, you know, feeds the 8 volts. That's, that's the part that doesn't work. So whatever is on here that does that voltage conversion is toast. I don't really want to rip this apart because that would potentially kill her radio I mean the radio still works and the CD player and stuff it's just a stupid illumination that's frustrating Honda that's that's frustrating why why go to this complication everyone always has just two wires everything's on the same circuit nice and easy no they have to splice everything together the audio and the HVAC and go through this voltage converter like unnecessary complication and when it breaks you gotta buy a whole new piece. And this thing, not cheap. I mean, I guess you can just buy this separately and leave your board since there's nothing wrong with the board. But that's just really annoying. We could look up a part, you know, price for this, but ugh. Anyways, <clears throat> that was the diagnosis. Couldn't really do the repair, no parts required, unfortunately. But uh appreciate you guys watching. See you next time. Bye bye. Hey, at least the radio still works. Didn't break that. You know, something, just right. something just ain't right. What about love? Can we just get some illumination? What's wrong with you, Honda? I think I'll hang on to my mystique for a while. See you guys next time. Bye bye.